right, so moving on to the lesson 1.14, the second lesson that's going to be on the 1.15 quiz. There's a lot in this lesson, so I've actually split this up into two different videos. This first video is going to be focused on problem solving. So yes, there's going to be some math, all right, but I'm going to teach you how to break it down and make it easy. So first thing is we're going to talk about temperature conversions, all right? So you're probably familiar with measuring temperature in Fahrenheit. You probably have heard of Celsius. All right, so Fahrenheit is the English system. Celsius is the metric system. Things that you, you don't necessarily need these memorized because one, you probably already know them, but just to kind of give you a reference point. Room temperature is usually about 72 degrees in Fahrenheit. Room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, body temperature, you know, is 98.6 in Fahrenheit, but it's 37 in Celsius. And then water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit and freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas in Celsius it boils at 100 and freezes at zero. So, converting between those two. Okay, so let's do some converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius. These are two equations. Uh, the first equation is if you need to go to Fahrenheit. All right, you would plug in a Celsius temperature here, multiply it by 9 fifths, and then add 32. Or if you need to solve for Celsius, you would plug a Fahrenheit temperature in here, which you first need to subtract 32 because that's in parentheses together, and then multiply by 5 ninths. So let's do a couple of these. Let's convert 45 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. All right, so that means I'm going to plug 45 in here. So I'm going to have 9 fifths times 45 plus 32. Calculator comes in handy. 9 fifths, 45. I got 113 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes sense because if body temperature is 98.6, which is equivalent to 37 degrees Celsius, then 45 should be higher than 98.6. So doing a different calculation, see if you can figure out this one. Let's do, uh, whoops, 150 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. All right, so you're gonna plug that 150 in here. Hit pause it, try it, see if you get the same answer. So I'm gonna have 5 ninths times 150 minus 32. So 150 minus 32 is in parentheses. So that means I have to do that first. And then multiply by 5 ninths. So I got 65.6 degrees Celsius. Which makes sense, 150 is above 113, so the Celsius temperature should be above 45. It's a good sign I'm doing it right. The next concept to cover is density. So density is one of those physical properties that we talked about. We can use density to identify substances. All right, so if you have a substance, density is the amount of substance mass in the space it takes up, volume. All right, so if you can measure the mass and the volume of the substance, you can calculate your density. So if it's an unknown substance and you're able to calculate that density, you can compare it to a table like this one and then figure out what the unknown substance is. Now the first trick to breaking these problems down is making sure you can identify which number is your mass and which number is your volume. And I think the best way to do that is using your units. Alright, so units for mass are going to be some form of grams. Alright, it might be 
regular grams, it might be kilograms, it might be milligrams, but all of them are going to be some form of grams. Volume, there's a couple of options here. You might have liters, which could then also be like milliliters or kiloliters or whatever, but you also might have centimeters cubed or even meters cubed. All right. So keep an eye out for those so that you can kind of break the problem down and figure out how to solve it. Example problem we have here is, so we have the definition of density. Here's the equation for it. All right, your units for density are just going to combine whatever your mass and volume units were. So it might be grams per centimeter cubed. It might be grams per milliliter, it might be kilograms per liter, something like that. Whatever your units are that you start with in mass and volume, those combine to make your units for density. So one thing, this should be a superscripted three, but apparently this program doesn't keep that. But I've got 134 grams of a certain metal that takes up 15 centimeters cubed. What is the substance? So this is exactly why we wanted to go over what the units mean because this doesn't tell me which number is mass and which number is volume. It just gives me units. So I know, let me switch colors here. I know that mass is the 134 because of the grams. And I know that because the 15 is in centimeters cubed, that's my volume. So I'm going to take 134, because I'm plugging it into this, so I'm going to have mass over volume divided by 15. Again, calculator. Give me 8.93 grams per centimeter cubed. Now I can come over to this table, look for one that's close to 8.93. And my substance is copper. All right. So I've got a bunch of potential practice problems over here. Choose one or two, try them out, see what you get. I'll do a few in the recording, probably two of them. Um, but the process to getting through these is all going to be the same. So. I guess one thing just to keep in mind, all of these centimeter threes are supposed to be superscripted threes. So that's cubed. Oh, and another quick thing is one milliliter is the exact same volume as centimeter cubed. So like these other ones that are in milliliters, you can think of them as being centimeters cubed. And really what that means is that we can use the same table over here, even if our measurement's in milliliters. All right, so we're gonna do this one. 95 grams of a substance takes up seven centimeters cubed. What is that substance? All right, so my mass is in grams, my volume is in centimeters cubed. So I'm gonna do 95 divided by seven, which equals 13. 0.57 centimeters cubed grams per centimeters cubed. So I have mercury. All right. Let's see, I'm gonna do this one. This looks like a pretty easy one. 20 grams of the substance takes up 20 milliliters. So there's my mass, there's my volume. I'm going to do 20 over 20, which equals 1, and that's going to be grams per milliliter, which is the same thing as grams per centimeter squared, so I'm looking for something on my table that's 1. Water. Alright, so hopefully this is making sense, but if it's not, attend a help session and we will make sure this makes sense.